Welcome to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast, where today's top influencers and entrepreneurs on the rise share empowering stories and ninja tips to become the fuel that ignites a positive change in your life. Our guests don't simply coast through life. They don't let difficult situations stop them. They set big goals, keep their eyes on the prize, and they're joining us today to share insider secrets you can use right now to step into your power and live your purpose. Now, here's your host, Christy Rafino. Hello, all, and welcome to today's episode of the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast. I am Christy Rafino, the host of the show and the creator of the Overcoming Mediocrity Project. And today I have the honor and pleasure to be introducing you to one of our Overcoming Mediocrity Empowered Women author team, Gina Tassinelli. So welcome, Gina. I am so happy to have you on our show today. Hi, Christy. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. We're going to have so much fun. But before we kind of get like dive in, I want to take a moment to uh, kind of read your bio and share a little bit with the audience about who you really are, because I know we, <laughs> it's funny, we met in a Facebook group, right? We met online, online uh, business dating, I guess you want to call it. Um, and we've known each other for probably three or four years. Yeah. Uh, last year, year and a half ago, I visited Florida and we connected. We had an event, I did a little event there and you came and joined us. So it was really neat to be able to kind of meet you in person. And then since then, we've just kind of keep circling around each other and, uh, you know, working with each other and supporting each other. And you are just uh, one of those women that I really love having in my community because you're always willing to just give and support and just help people. So I just kind of want to take you. a moment to share that before mm -hmm. I read your official bio. So Gina Tassinelli, Tassinelli is a wife, mom of two kids and a multi-business owner as the owner and founder of social media marketing and consulting agency. It's called Hype Media and Style Rebel Mama. So are those two different businesses? Yes, they are. So yes, I wear a few different hats. Yeah. One, so Hype Media is a social media marketing agency yep. and then Style Rebel Mama is more about personal styling and image consulting to females. Yeah. Perfect. So together, these two brands have evolved into stylishly branding with Gina. Yay. It sounds like we rehearsed that, but we really didn't. <laughs> So both of Gina's businesses began simultaneously in 2009 after she resigned from a 10-year career in advertising with a global media company. As an agency, Gina and her team support small and medium-sized businesses with developing and implementing social media marketing and advertising strategies for lead generation. But her passion is consulting female entrepreneurs and empowering them to build a personal brand that's authentic, impactful, and one that connects with them with their perfect audience so they can grow their influence, monetize, and scale their business. She does all of this through one-on-one -on -one consulting and her group mentorship program. So, wow. Again, <laughs> thanks, Gina, for joining me today. Thank you. So we met again, like we, I mentioned earlier, um, and we've, it was funny because you've, you've kind of seen me produce probably maybe four of the books during that time frame, And I, I don't know, for some reason we talked about it, but then I, I didn't really continue to ask you because I thought, well, you know what, you, you see what we're doing. And then all of a sudden you just kind of said to me, I'm ready. And I'm like, <laughs> ready for what? I'm ready to be in one of your books. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> so, so tell me why you kind of all of a sudden felt that you, well, the time was right. And what is the big, what is the big goal? Why, right? what is like, what does your story share with the world that will allow you to, to really kind of let your message get out there in a bigger way? So I was thinking about this the other day. Um, and I really think that it was, really everything that's happened in the most recent years, literally the last 12 or so months. 
Um, I've had such an incredible opportunity to work more one-on-one -on -one with female entrepreneurs as my agency side has grown and I've been able to add team members to that side of the business. So I've had more time to focus on my passion, which is working directly with female entrepreneurs. And so during that experience, still happening now, I have received just so much gratitude and also have been able to connect with so many amazing women that have just come out from virtually come from, you know, social media. And I felt like it was time to share my journey throughout all this process. So it's something that I've been wanting to do um, for quite some time. And I never honestly I envisioned it, but I didn't see it actually happening yet for me to transform or evolve my business into a place where I could have a team to help manage our done for you clients. And then I could focus working more directly with just women. And so having that opportunity over the last 12 or so months um, is really what just kind of said to me, you know what, you need to, you need to share this, you need to share this experience and how, how, you know, and the journey that, that I've been through. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember when we kind of first started having conversations mm -hmm. and you had not really launched your personal brand business yet. It was, it was mainly your agency, yeah. And you loved what you were doing. You're like a whiz with Facebook ads and you had all these great things you were doing, but I think you recognized that that model wasn't necessarily scalable unless you, until you got a team around you, right? right? You needed to get the people in place to help you because uh, like me, like you, of course, your kids are younger, but we yeah. don't want to be a slave to our computer. We want to be able to um, kind of like maximize our time and you, you did a great job. And I know it was a journey for you. Um, but I see now years later, how you've done a great job of, of positioning your agency as a, with your done for you products, um, mm -hmm. being able to position that as a way that it can continue to grow without you kind of being in the weeds and right. you're like focusing on growing that while also supporting people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and helping them um, with your branding. So I, I just think, I just want to give you a big hat off because you've done a great job of evolving into this and stepping because I know it's kind of scary. It is. It's scary. And it's, it's, it's still a, sometimes a juggling act. Um, yeah. you know, I definitely have to check myself quite often because you, you know, I still will find myself on my laptop late at night and, um, and, you know, that's not why we're in business for ourselves, right? We're not right. really, I didn't leave corporate America to be working 24 seven, but as an entrepreneur, especially if you're creative, you start thinking of the next project and then the next oh. project and then the next, <laughs> or the next 10 and projects, right? right? And it's, <laughs> yeah. And you're working on all of them at once and you never complete that one. And so, um, it still is a balancing act. So it's, it's not, it's not perfect, but, um, I'm working my passion, which yes. is what's ma what makes it so satisfying and still and, being able to be home with the kids and, and, and my hubby and do, you know, family and things that we love to do as well. Yes. And I think even, well, for me, even bigger yet is you're fulfilling your purpose right. and it was your story that allowed you to realize that. Right. So can you share a little bit oh, about yeah. your story? I know you're going to um, I know you, you've written it all out. I've read it. It's amazing. Uh, it will be out. And I would say to, to make it safe in July ish. So make sure you connect with Gina and uh, be on the first to get an autographed copy from her. Um, but share, give everybody just kind of like a, like a little preview of what your story is about and what, like, why did you have this revelation to share? Why do you have a revelation to transition into the business that you're in now? Mm-hmm. So first I have to say that the experience of writing the story has been transformational within itself. So yes. thank you yes. for the opportunity <laughs> to give, give us this opportunity. Um, so the story starts with me growing up as a dancer and going through body image struggles. Um, and what I realized was 
that was a point in my life that really, um, it didn't define me, but it definitely led to other parts of my self-doubting and my hiding Mm. from showing up. And so that's why the name of the story is a life of hide and seek stylishly transformed. And as going through my years of high school and then not dancing anymore. I I stopped dancing my senior year of high school, Um, but I did compete. And I, you know, I, I was definitely not the tallest and linkiest ballerina, Um, but I loved and I adored my peers that did have that, that typical ballerina form that you see, you know, on stage. And um, being a Hispanic girl with curves, that was just not my body, but I didn't know at that time how to accept it. Although, you know, it's, I, I was not, my parents were super su- supportive. They, um, nobody was telling me that I should be a certain way. It was just all in my head. And I know that it's a lot from, which is ironic, but the way that women are marketed and, <laughs> and now that's, now look at what I'm doing. I'm in the marketing industry. So, um, so it's, that's part of the irony, but moving through, through past, through all of that, and then finally coming to a point in my life where I began to understand that we, our bodies are all made differently and that's okay. And things that I probably noticed other people didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of this is also in our own head. Um, but I, I started to learn how to dress for my body shape. And that helped me really just love showing up, love, you know, especially somebody that is a beach bum on the weekends. Um, wearing a bathing suit was not comfortable for me. Even wearing shorts was not comfortable for me. And, and living in, in Florida most of my life, it was a, a hard transition. But finally, once I understood that, when you learn how to dress for your body shape, you can then dress in a way that you show up and you love your body and you don't need to hide. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that transferred into just how I would show up in business, how I, um, you know, my relationships, how I would communicate with others and going through that journey of understanding my, myself, my body, um, loving myself, And of course, you know, going through life of other experiences, um, definitely failures, really bad mistakes and having to finally come to um, acceptance of those and not letting those times of my life define me um, have finally led me to a place where I just feel free and I can feel authentic and I can, um, you know, tell my story and share this because I think for us women, we do go through whether it's body image or addiction, or, you know, there's so many different things that we go through and um, we get in our head that this is, we're not worthy of anything better. And that's absolutely the complete opposite. So, Mm -hmm. so yeah, so it's helped me to find what my purpose is to, you know, work my passion with intention, um, with gratitude and hopefully make an impact on others. Yeah. Yeah. So I love what you said initially is that, um, the, the whole process of writing was kind of a transformational process for you. And I believe me, I know when I first did my story, (laughs) uh, nine years ago, I, that was a journey and I wrote it, rewrote it and rewrote it again and rewrote it and rewrote it. And since then I've heard that through, um, I've heard that from so many other women. And so I've kind of come to learn. And and of course, maybe this is something that people just kind of know, but you don't really know it, that it's our stories that hold us back. It's not necessarily always reality, but at the time we think it's reality. Mm -hmm. And when you can get in a position where you can recognize that your story, whatever it was, was just your journey. And that journey brought you someplace for a reason. What that does is it opens up the world to your next bigger story. And that's one of the things I say all the time. But for me, it's a shame that these young girls now and, and us as a uh, growing up, but even more so now, I just feel that the, the girls today are bombarded with so many mixed 
messages, way more than we had. Right. Um, well, me for sure. You're <laughs> you're a little younger than me, yeah. but we had so many mis- mixed messages then that, I, like right now, I just can't imagine all of the stories that the the next few generations are having to deal with because it's it's life is hard as as it is. Let alone when you start creating for more problems for ourselves through the right. stories that we tell ourselves. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And and also those stories impact what we do with our lives, the decisions that we make, the relationships that we have, how we deal with those relationships, um, you know, all of our shortcomings. So it makes a huge impact. And then, and then when you fail at things, um, then that has an impact on that. So it's just like this, you know, cycle. Um, So but yes, writing the story was also, I'd have to say, very therapeutic. Yes, for sure. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Gina, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your story. Again, make sure you connect with Gina. She actually has two books coming out in July, <laughs> July, August-ish. Mm-hmm. So make sure you connect with her, get your very own autographed copy. And if you don't mind, Gina, can you hang on just a moment while we take a commercial break? And then I know we're going to come back and you've got some, what I call ninja tips to share with our audience about branding and brands and all kinds of mistakes people make and marketing. And I know you've got some great tips to share. So hang on a little bit. Okay. All right. Great. I know, I know you hear us asking you to subscribe, rate and review, but what does that really mean? Is it really that important? Well, if other podcast hosts are anything like me, they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into their show. And personally, I get really discouraged when I have something great to share and no one is listening. Beyond algorithms, ratings and reviews are critical for a show's sustainability. It goes way beyond fanning the flames of our egos or by getting a little that a girl pat on the back. Reviews create social proof and prove that our show has an engaged and loyal following. So if you like our show, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review. And while you're at it, pick up one of our Overcoming Mediocrity books on Amazon. You'll be glad that you did. Okay, well, welcome back to today's episode of the Overcoming Mediocrity with Gina Tassinelli. And if you didn't hear the first half of our show, Gina shared a little bit about her story, and now she's going to share her ninja tips. (laughs) So let's start with the first question I have for you, Gina, because I feel that so many people, they don't get this concept and they get kind of confused by the difference between brands and branding. So can you cover this? Yes. I, I even got confused with this when I started, even with my advertising and marketing background. So branding are the tools that we use for our brand to market our brand, which would be like your logo, your website, those types of things. Um, the colors, the fonts that you use, that's your, that's part of your branding, your brand, especially when we're talking about a personal brand is all encompassing of you. It's the human being effect inside of your business. So Mm -hmm. this is something that I absolutely missed when I first left corporate America to be on my own. And I know for me, because I was so used to working with national brands in my previous life, um, I, there, there was no personal brand with the businesses that I worked with. They were, um, a lot of them were national brands. So like beer, beers and beer distributors and things like that, car dealerships. And so they're, you know, they represented themselves as a business brand. They had their logo and they had a website and that was it. There was no face to those. Mm. Um, and so when I left, I thought, okay, I'm ready to be on, on my own. I need to get my website together. I need to get my logo together and I'm ready to start 
and launch my business. And that's exactly what I did. Luckily, I did have a few clients that came with me. And so, um, you know, I was fortunate in that regard. But when it was time to find new clients to scale, I was putting myself out there with my website leading and my logo leading and not with me leading. And so that is something that I love to teach now because that is the foundational step to honestly building a successful business as an entrepreneur, solopreneur, even a small business owner is to show up as a personal brand, which is a reflection of you. It's your values. It's your experiences. um, It's your personality and putting yourself ahead of your services and products and logo and, you know, all of that jazz. So, um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell, the difference between brand and branding. Yeah. And I learned this lesson the hard way as well, because for the first, well, until I shared my story, my organization, the dynamic professional women's network, I I was very comfortable hiding in the background and, you know, I'm the president of this company, but it's all about the company and, you know, this and that, and the business and the logo and the website. And I wasn't even on the website at first. Well, other than I have my little profile somewhere hidden on one of the pages, Mm -hmm. But when I shared my story, what happened is things started to change and I, I didn't like it because as an introvert, I was really comfortable in the background, but I kind of became more the face of the business. And it was more like the, the members were connecting with me more. I, it just created a really strong community once I get out in front. So I like to look at it as your brand is the cohesiveness. It's the, the, the making sure everybody sees it and recognizes, oh yeah, that's that brand. And the branding is like the connected, the connectedness of it, right? Yeah. But I have that backwards. I have it no. backwards. The branding is the cohesiveness and the brand is you. Because of the colors and the fonts yeah. and the logos. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you're right. Um, that's, and that's exactly what I did too. I was hiding behind my company Mm -hmm. and it was such a game changer when I flipped that such a game changer, it would have saved, you know, a few years of, (laughs) of some headaches, right. And headaches and, you know, looking at your (laughs) bank account and all working a million hours and trying to like hunt down clients. There's so many things that it affects when you're able to get out in front and be the face of your business. Absolutely. And, and people, they, um, they take you more seriously when you show up as a personal brand, they see you as the expert, you know, you, it's it's not about negotiating your value anymore because they understand the value that you bring to the table. So it's definitely a game changer and, um, and something that I would encourage every entrepreneur to do if they've never done, or maybe, if maybe they're planning on, you know, doing a rebrand, Um, It's a great way to, to get that going. Yeah, absolutely. So let's switch gears here about this and kind of pivot to marketing Mm -hmm. because now that you've got your branding established and your brand identified and you're out in the front um, as the face of your business, what are some common mistakes entrepreneurs make when they're in the marketing part of it? So the number one mistake that I see is pushing their product first and um, pushing their product without knowing that that's what their audience wants. So I really believe that when you give your ideal audience what they want first, they will organically understand that what they need is what it is you have to offer. And that is something that I see a lot of people miss the boat on is they're pushing, you know, this lipstick or this mascara, or they're pushing um, this coaching program or this membership, but they haven't asked the questions that would get their ideal client to that point. So, and I find this a lot also when people want to run ads on social media, especially they want to go straight to running an ad to a product instead of, and they have no audience. So it's, it's number one, a huge waste of money, but it's, you know, we have to think of marketing as 
taking people through an experience, through a customer journey where they're becoming aware of you, then they're going to consider you and then they're ready to pull out their credit card and spend money with you. Mm. And so, so yeah, I, that would be like the number one thing that I see is, is just throwing products out in front of people without creating a connection with them first and building a relationship. And I think the key thing that you said was it's about the customer's journey, not our journey. Mm -hmm. Like we, we kind of go at marketing uh, from the perspective of our agenda and right. it's not about us. It's not about what we want to sell It's about what they need. And if we stay focused on the customer journey, which is why it's so hard for us to do our own marketing, right? Cause mm -hmm. we can't always see that. Um, but working with somebody like you allows us to kind of stay in check because the minute we start focusing on what we want, then you can like switch it back around and say, well, it's really not about what you want. It's about what they need. Right. It, it, that is so true. It's just like, um, I have my own mentor that helps me with my business strategies and I yes. could definitely, I'm, you know, I'm capable of doing that for my business, but actually not so much because we're so close to our own business. Yeah. So just like you hear coaches need coaches, yep. the same therapists need therapists. I mean, we're all human beings. So so yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that's so true. I, I can't, I, I have a hard time with my own story as well as my own business model. It's like, you know, I can help people like this, figure out the direct path for them. But for my own, I'm like, I look at it and I'm just, it's like Greek, right? <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing, but then all of a sudden I end up in the wrong place. I'm like, yeah, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, um, What's the one thing that you see entrepreneurs skip when building their business that is stopping them from scaling? And scaling is so important. Scaling is what allows us to stop chasing the dollar and stop with that like money for like, um, what is it? The, the time for dollars, like trading your, your time for money. Um, yeah. When you can scale your business, you can actually help more people in less time and make more money. So what is the one thing that you see they skip? So I, this will bring us back to building a personal brand. Uh, yeah, that's the number one thing I see people skip. And, and what um, the great thing about, you know, taking the time to do that is that when you go to market yourself, it's so much easier to market yourself because you're doing it from a very authentic place. You're not having to feel like you're pushing people to buy something. It just becomes an organic process. Um, so yeah, I, that's honestly, that is the number one thing that, that people skip. I skipped it, you know, so it's, and I catch that now all of the time. Yeah. And then the other thing, um, it's not so much that they skip, but something that, um, I, I do find people also, um, comparing themselves to, you know, influencers that they want to be like and trying to follow those same systems and what they don't realize is that many of these people they started from scratch also but they've been doing it for years or they have investors behind them or they have a huge following and connections so and a huge team um, yeah and a huge team. it takes exactly. a huge team to be able to do the things that these internet digital marketers that are out there that we see all the time that you know you see these ads and I know one of my um, friends, uh, she's, she's got a really great business and she's got like a $10,000 a month Facebook marketing budget. Mm -hmm. So that took years for her to get to that point. Right. So it's just, we see that it's like, we see things on social media and we think, well, why are we not there? Well, they were all where you are right now. It's right. just taking one baby step at a time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. One more question. So w I see you post so many great things on social media, mostly Facebook. I, I don't really hang around in the other platforms. I should, I, I know I should, but I don't. <laughs> um, but I see you do so many great things. Actually, I just saw a great live. I know, uh, yeah. I don't know if your Facebook group is open or not, but I'm in it. And I saw you do a live the other day that it, it was like great. So what is the, the most impactful thing that you can do on social media that will provide the best engagement? Because it really is about the engagement. If we're just throwing stuff out there and nobody's engaging, we're wasting right. our time. Totally. So um, 
I have to give you two. So okay. number one is Facebook Live or Instagram Live, live video. Live video is, and, num- and it's also prioritized content by these platforms. Um, but it is so impactful because people start to connect with you as a human being instead of just as a business. When they can hear you, they can, you know, listen to your tone of voice. They get to know your personality. You start to connect with them. And, um, and so I find that to be that when I started doing Facebook lives, um, it's probably been about four or five years now that was, that just really changed my business, uh, people finding me. Um, and then what you can do with a Facebook live is amazing. There's so many ways of repurposing that one piece of content that you don't have to recreate pieces of content. You can transcribe it into a blog post. You can take quotes out of it and create little social media images from your quotes that you say in there. You can do, you know, little 15 second clips from there. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, And then the second thing is that I, and maybe I'm a little biased because this is what I do for a living, but is having some sort of advertising budget to spend on social media ads. It's, and you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars a day. Literally what I, what I do for my, most of my clients, unless they have higher budgets, but even for my own businesses and my students is we have a low budget ad strategy that we teach. And literally with $2 a day, you can have leads coming into your inbox. Um, But it takes time and there is it's, it's a low, lower budget strategy. So it does take some patience, but it's a great way to offset the time that you need to spend on social media to organically get the right reach, you know, get the amount of attention and engagement that you want. Um, you know, you, you, it's kind of a trade-off. You're either trading time to spend 24 seven on social media or you can optimize what you're doing with a low budget ad strategy and scale your business quickly, quicker. So yeah, those would be the two, two most important things, I think. All right. Well, I know that low budget ad strategy to me sounds very appealing. I want to (laughs) learn more about that. Uh, I have used to do Facebook ads years ago when I held a lot of events Mm -hmm. and then I just have stopped doing them just because I didn't, first of all, I hear you have to have these huge budgets and then I wasn't quite sure the right strategy because without the right strategy, you're still throwing money out the door. Even if it is $2 a day that adds up, if nothing is happening with it. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I really want to hear more about that, Gina. So maybe we'll have you back on another episode and you can share a little bit more about your ad strategies. Um, but right now I know you have a special gift that you want to share with our audience. It is called, let's see, what's it called? Um, Let's see. I know you gave that to me. How to build a magnetic personal brand video guide. So you want to share with the audience what that is so they are excited to get it from you? Yeah. So in this guide, it's literally a step-by-step of the foundations to building an intentional and magnetic personal brand. So what I do is I walk you through each step of the guide in a video series. You also get the workbook and by the end, you should be super clear as to the message that you want to put out there, your unique service proposition, how to stand out from the crowd and how to find your ideal audience as well. Um, which will also help you build your own content. So yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's about a five video series. I think there's like a, a bonus in there somewhere, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's actually a small, it's a mini version of the very first part of my program. Oh, okay. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Gina, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on our podcast. I'm excited to be able to get your story out there in a big way in, in your book and then the follow-up book that you have that you're putting together. Um, so make sure that you, everybody that's listening, make sure you connect with Gina. She is a wealth of information and I know she'd love to be able to support all of you on your journey to build your own stylishly person what is it stylishly what is your brand stylishly branding so so your styled brand 
<laughs> what do we call it? What are we helping them build their personal brand stylishly? <laughs> stylishly. Stylishly transforms personal brand. There you go. There's it help them stylishly transform their personal brand. So their clients will start coming to them. Loving that. All right. Thank you, Gina. This is awesome. Yes. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams once they learn the art of mastering their story. We will see you on the next episode. Until then, continue going out there and overcome your own mediocrity in your life. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams once they've learned the art of mastering their story. Mastering our stories is the key to everything we want in life. Our stories can either hold us back or they can propel us to new heights. We can choose. You can choose. Choose to overcome mediocrity with us. Let's achieve greatness together. To learn more, visit www.overcomingmediocrity.org. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast.